Star Wars is one of the best known and most popular film sagas of all time. Evidently, it is pure fantasy, isn't it? Is there any science in the fiction of Star Wars? If we admit the possibility that space will be explored and alien species will be encountered in the future or a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, the events in the movies are possible. But there are still many things in them that go against what physics says. For example, those spectacular explosions that we see and hear in the films in space would sound like this. On Earth, we have air, which is quite good for transmitting sound waves. Water is even better. But in space, there is no air and no water either, in case you're wondering. So the explosions couldn't have been heard. But apparently some work in the expanded universe has conveniently explained that ships in the movies simulate the sound so that pilots can hear it. Hmm. Something else that doesn't make a sound is lasers in real life. But blasters in the movies shoot with a nice sounding... What? No? Okay. Play the real effect. And, of course, laser shots do not move that slowly. A laser travels at the speed of light. So if you were shot, you'd have a hole first, and then you'd notice you've been shot. Not even Han Solo could have dodged those blasts. But, of course, the blasters from Star Wars are not lasers. According to Mythbusters, they travel at something like 130 miles an hour, a little slower than a paintball pellet. That's probably why the stormtroopers could never hit any of our heroes. The other laser we can't forget about is the lightsaber. Remember? Okay, okay, I won't do any more sound effects. If it were really a laser, we'd have several problems. How does a laser were to stop and not go on indefinitely as the beam of light it is? If sabers are light beams, how can they touch each other? And wouldn't dressing in silvered clothes be enough to reflect the beam? Well, to be fair, nobody in the movies has said they're lasers, so they may very well be plasma beams. Though in order to produce plasma beams, we'd need the kind of energy that only a nuclear reactor could provide. Or a crystal from the Adiga system. That last one was a very geeky reference, especially made for Star Wars fans. Don't worry if you didn't get it. There's also been criticism of the fact that planet Tatooine revolves around two suns, a so-called binary system. It was believed that it was impossible for planets to exist in this type of system. But at least one planet has been discovered orbiting twin suns. Star Wars ships, the X-Wings for example, rotate on their axes when changing directions, doing what is called a banked turn, as if they were maneuvering inside an atmosphere, a movement that in the vacuum of space is absolutely unnecessary. In fact, even the wings are unnecessary. As space goes, ships might well be cubes. Why then do they move like that? Well, for the same reason lightsabers clash and blasters and explosions make noise. Because it looks awesome! What is most amazing is how deep a mark Star Wars has made on our awareness. What is the reason for this? Was George Lucas, the saga's creator, just lucky? Or is there any science in the way he conceived the fiction? It turns out that there is science behind the fiction. While he was writing the story, Lucas was reading The Hero with a Thousand Faces by Joseph Campbell. Campbell found that many of the legends, sacred stories and myths from antiquity, even if they come from different cultures, surprisingly follow the same narrative pattern, which he called the monomyth or the hero's journey. On this journey, the hero, be they Gilgamesh, Jesus or Luke Skywalker, goes through 12 stages. After being born in an extraordinary way, the hero lives in an ordinary world where they receive a call to adventure that they first reject due to fear of change. Then the hero meets a wise mentor. 
and leaves the ordinary world to venture into a different one. There, the hero faces various tests and enemies, but also finds allies. After passing all tests and coming closer to the goal, the hero encounters a challenge in which their own life is at risk. If the hero can overcome their fear, they will receive a reward that has to do with recognition by their father. I am your father. Or a sacred marriage. Finally, after facing death, the hero goes back to the ordinary world, but transformed, and carries with him an elixir or a sacred object to help his people with. Communication researcher Jesus Martin Barbero thought that the appeal of certain narrative schemes is due to the fact that they are true to symbolic forms that we have shared as societies since long ago. These forms have a DNA called cultural matrices. The hero's journey is such an old and deep cultural matrix that once it was dressed up in elements of science fiction that are appealing today, it became irresistible. Think about it! What do you think about Star Wars? Tell us in the comments! And if you liked this video, subscribe to our channel! It is your destiny!